everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octeo Studio. Today I'm sharing with you another art journal page, mixed media art journal page. And this is in the 13th journal. Remember, I'm in that Canvas Corp Brands Creative Crew design team, and we're doing a round robin journal swap where each month I get a different journal to work in. Well, there is a 13th journal which will be kept by Canvas Corp at the end of the project in December so it's it's also traveling around so this month I happen to have two journal projects with Canvas Corp Brands um, so this is that other one so the first thing I did which I didn't show on the camera is uh, several coats of heavy gesso there was some bleed through on the paper and I wasn't sure what colors I was going to use so I wanted to color, cover the paper really well so it's really well sealed Plus, I added some little bit of texture with that heavy gesso as well. And then I'm using, and because there's so much texture on this page, because of the bumpy previous page, plus then the, the gesso, I decided to make this page all about texture. I also wanted to represent where I live because this, this journal is traveling all around the world. And so I wanted to show something unique about Tucson. So I decided to do... Uh, southwestern type colors and cactuses because the saguaro cactus which is the the one that eventually grows arms it has to be about 100 years old before it starts even growing any arms mostly it just looks like a you know a rounded tall thing so I wanted to represent that on my page as well as use the colors and uh, shapes and textures that represent where I live this isn't a requirement of this project. I just, that's just what I wanted to do. So I got out some texture paste because remember I said it was going to be out about texture. One of the texture paste is the light molding paste from Golden, which is kind of an easy to dry, uh, fluffy paste. And then the other one is crackle paste, white crackle paste from Prima Art Basics. And it crackles once it's dry. And depending on how how you dry it, whether you dry it with the heat tool or whether you let it dry, uh, that's what affects how big the crackles are. I also got out a bunch of different colors. wasn't sure which ones I was going to use um, of different tattered angels mists. I have the glimmer mist, which has you know a, a kind of a translucent color with a mica in it. I have the chalkboard mists, which has a more opaque base, also with mica in it, so it's sparkly. Then I have some of the baseboard mists that don't have any mica. I wasn't concerned about the the which which mist it was. I was looking through all my mists to find out which colors I had and which ones I was going to use in this project. So I just pulled out a bunch of them. I didn't end up using all of them. So I had a piece of paper on the side that I was writing down which ones I used as I used them because I knew I wasn't going to use them all. So I started out, and I'm, I also have out every single pilot, palette knife that I own, <laughs> both the plastic and the metal ones, because I thought a palette knife would have the rounded top that I would need to use to make these shapes that I'm trying to make with the texture paste. I'm also coloring the texture paste both I tried it both with the crackle paste which is what this this teal blue one is colored crackle paste and then the other one the light molding paste has also been colored and I mixed colors um, I didn't stick with just one pure color I just I know that all the mists are a water soluble prod, a product that I can mix into these to change the color because you know texture paste it comes white uh, there are black there are other co there are colored texture paste I'm not saying that there aren't colored texture paste because there are but in general the ones that I have are white because I figure why would I buy a specific color of texture paste if I can just color it so that's what I'm doing is coloring texture paste you know alternating between the two different textures uh, whether it's the crackle or whether it's the kind of puffy one that's my best way to describe it like when it's dry and you press it down it almost seems like a sponge it's this strange stuff but 
it dries quickly so that's one I usually use because I don't have any patience um, the crackle paste takes longer to dry but I did force dry it with my heat tool so that that creates a smaller crazing a smaller cracking than you would get if you let it dry naturally but I'm not gonna let it dry naturally I don't have this patience so I'm just making different colors of my texture paste using the mist colors and that's all I'm doing and then apply using different different sizes and shapes of palette knives trying to come up with um, different widths different dimensions of my saguaro cactuses of course cactuses aren't turquoise uh, they all are kind of a green gray color but um, I'm going for southwestern colors this is an abstract it's not realistic so um, also depending on the light you might get some blue shades if you're looking at a distance if there's a shadow um, you might get warmer shades on the cactuses if the Sun is shining directly on it and um, you might get halos on them where the Sun shines you know on the spikes on the the cactus prickles you know <laughs> uh, when the when the Sun shines on those in a certain way you get these interesting halos so I was just thinking about all those things as I was doing this and trying to make a variety of sizes shapes colors um, but give the impression of what I was trying to make and then of course I had to throw in some terracotta type colors because that's a, a southwestern a very common southwestern color um, a lot of houses here are that color kind of an adobe color so I threw in that one as well and I, I really like the way it turned out I would like to keep it actually but I have to send it on to the next person so I'm, I'll be sad to see it go um, I did also do a few of them in just the plain white that kind of are in the background and you won't see those until I put more color on but um, this was very satisfying and fun my only uh, worry was that I was gonna make a mess and get it on the other pages that when you have a bound book uh, it's hard not to mess up the clean white pages and other people's work I, I'm so careful about it you know I really don't want to uh, mess anything up so then once I had dried all my texture paste with my heat tool and that took a while um, of course I cut that out because you don't need to see texture paste drying or paint drying <laughs> that's just boring then I started adding some spritzes of color uh, to the background and over the cactuses and um, the surprising one and the one that came out really cool is this uh, it's called simply sheer that's another one of the types of mist that you can get and it's it's completely translucent with just a little bit of color but the color of it is shade and in the bottle it looked like a green gray but on the page it actually was pretty darn gray and for some reason and I don't understand the chemistry of it it haloed itself around the cactuses in some cases and made an interesting shadow that created a lot of dimension so I was really happy with that color <laughs> shade I don't you know what color is shade I don't know is it gray I don't know is it green I don't know but it's uh, it was a fun addition once I once I use it I'm like oh this is really cool so then the next thing I did was to use the plastic uh, pump things on the insides of the bottles to directly apply some of the mist um, generally on the left side I was trying to go for the left side mostly uh, trying to add in some shadows or uh, let the let the mist pool down into the the texture that I have I, I dragged the pilot knife quite a bit in a, um, a vertical motion to create um, if you look at a cactus it has it has bumps ridges uh, symmetrical ridges that go in come out go in come out so there's these grooves all up and down in a vertical way so I was trying to create those uh, with the texture paste by dragging my palette knife and then now I'm just adding in the mist to kind of um, emphasize those drag marks then I added some splatters and when I went here with the <laughs> the uh, wave blue one there was there was a blop so then I tried to clear the blop 
it, and it was like thickened up I don't know it, it wasn't a mist anymore it was thick and so I couldn't get all of it off so I just decided to go ahead with my uh, baby wipe and just add it to the whole top of the page because that's where the sky is anyway so you'd have a sky blue at the top you know so uh, that's how you turn your uh, mistake or your accident into a positive thing because I like the way the blue ended up kind of a light blue at the top which I may not have put that had that accident not happened so um, sometimes accidents work out and of course you can always you can always work with the accidents unless it's a complete you spilled the entire bottle of mist on your page maybe you can't fix that <laughs> But if it's just a little thing like that, sure, you can fix it. And it might even Im improve your composition. Happy accidents. So then I decided to use my Stabilo All pencil and a wet brush to go ahead and add in a deeper shadow. This is the black pencil. This is a highly water s uh, reactive pencil that I just kind of drew onto the left side and then blended it with the wet paintbrush just to um, make the cactus appear more rounded as if they would be. I mean, yeah, this is abstract, but it's still, I mean, it's still got to look like something. It's still got, you still got to be able to understand what you're seeing when you look at it, which uh, brings up me showing it to someone. And he said, I said, what does this look like to you? Okay, that was my first mistake. Don't don't say what does it look like to you to someone who's an engineer, because they're going to give you a very literal interpretation of what it is. And the first couple things he said, I can't say on camera. And then he said it looked like the ocean. Now this was before I had finished it. This was just after I had done all the cactuses, and then I added um, another element that you'll see coming up soon. And he's like, it looks like the ocean. Like, how does that look like the ocean? It looks like cactuses. So, yeah. <laughs> Rule number one, don't ask anyone in my house anything about art because you're not going to get a good answer. Uh, yeah. He just can't see the same way I does. He, I do, not I does. He sees... Uh, he sees practical things. He sees actual things he doesn't see any um, I don't know it's hard to describe so then my next thing that I did was to use some acrylic paint this is a deco art media line and this one is called interference gold and it's not a pure gold it's like a clear with some sort of shimmery stuff in it and depending on what color you put it over it kind of changes the color I mean it still looks gold but um, I used that to highlight, I'm just using the plastic palette knife and dragging it lightly over the texture and then it, it attaches itself to the raised up areas and it doesn't go down into the, into the grooves and it, it, it highlights. Um, you've seen me do this before but I used like a, a wax, um, ink and gold type wax, which I could have done. But I just I grab I was trying to grab the white and I grabbed that and I thought oh this will be really cool so it was another kind of happy accident and then I used some different circular shaped uh, junk that's on my desk that I like to do for mark making I was thinking about the sunshine I was thinking about um, I don't know just I just it just felt like I felt like it needed circles so I put circles on it using that interference gold and it just it gives it more dimension and interest um, but that's that's at the point when I ask him what he thought of it and I think because it had the circles that look like bubbles on there he thought it was under the ocean I don't know anyway <laughs> I just need to not ask I need to not uh, show any of my art to anybody in my family because they don't get it <laughs> like dude seriously okay so now I have this fine liner bottle and it's got titanium white um, fluid paint in it that I've added a little bit of extra water to and shaken it up so it's very fluid and it has a teeny tiny little applicator tip and this is what I was talking about where when the sun is shining a certain way on cactus they you can see 
the spikes in kind of a, it's kind of like they're highlighted and they're standing out and maybe they're a halo. And so uh, I was trying to portray that effect and give just, just a touch more of a clue as to what this is by adding just, they're just basically little dots, teeny tiny dots using the fine line applicator and some acrylic paint. And I thought that turned out really well. And then I uh, used some more white acrylic and did some bigger circles. I totally think they look like cactuses. I don't know what any why anybody else would think it doesn't. <laughs> you guys can give me your opinions. I know you will. <laughs> Just leave me a comment. But don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Subscribe. You know, all those things while I'm thinking about it. But I know you will leave me your comment about what you think about my cactuses. Okay, so now I wanted to put some cactus wren birds on there. So you can't see it because it's off screen, but I printed a couple pictures of cactus wrens uh, so that I would try to get it fairly accurate and make it look like, you know, what it's supposed to be. And I drew them with my um, drafting pencil, my mechanical pencil first, and then I just cut that part out because you couldn't see it anyway, and then went over it with the small nib out of my uh, Fabricastel pit pen illustration set, and I'm first adding the lines and then going back in and adding some detail with the same pen, um, just, the, just the small nib, I didn't use any of the other ones in the set and trying to make these birds look uh, like a cactus wren. They have kind of a po very pointy but curved down a little bit beak and then they have kind of a, um, a white stripe across their eye and then a black uh, kind of almost like a like a mask like a bandit mask except for it's white instead of black and then it's outlined by black. Then I had printed out some words that I wanted to stick on there off my computer and I printed them in different sizes because I wasn't sure what size would look right but I ended up using the size 16 font size. I've been doing so many ATCs lately that I'm used to using like a, a 10 point font or something because they're so tiny and um, you know working myself back into doing bigger projects so I started out with 10 and then I made a 12 and a 14 and then I ended up using the 16 so obviously I should have just went for the 16 to begin with. Could have even went for an 18 but once I glued those little pieces of paper down with my glue stick then I went back in with some of the same colors that I had before and colored in my wrens. They are a yellowish brown with a lot of white and black spots. So that's what I was trying to go for. And my first brown was pretty flat, so then I ended up adding in some more yellowy tone to it um, over the top, and also some ivory and a little bit of kind of a goldish color. And that worked out pretty well for the color I was going for. And, and I had to, of course, dry it again because the color wanted to run outside of my birds so I had to keep drying it. <laughs> so once my birds were all colored in and dried I went ahead with my white Posca pen and just added some white highlights because I you know the, the birds have very distinctive white spots so I thought that it would be a good idea to add some white and also a little highlight in the eye and things like that and then I also brought back in and then I brought in, not back in, the black Posca pin and added um, some deeper blacks because the birds were kind of blending into the background too much. Then I took, uh, I'd already drawn around my glued on quote, well it's not really a quote, it's just words, and I'd used my Stabilo All Pencil and I went ahead and blended that using a, um, some of the goldish colored mist and it looked kind of good and then I added in some more black. 
So I hope you've enjoyed this page that really represents where I live and um, I really like it. And I think that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.